and welcome to our and today it's spooky season. Do 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 do. I thought we would I don't know give you a Halloween costume idea. And today, because of the cultural research that was Dua Lipa's future nostalgia, I'm gonna transform myself into Dua Lipa from the physical music video, and I will be guiding you all through the transformation. We're going step by step. It's almost like a bit of a full circle because I did a reaction video to it, which then led me to get half of you guys come along. So thank you, thank you for 2.6 actually. Honestly, I'm just purely excited. So, without further ado, let us begin. Ah. Okay, so, what I noticed throughout the whole entire music video of Physical is that she was wearing monochromatic colours, which is a pair of trousers and a little crop top that was just sleeveless. So, this is the closest I had to like a proper matching set, which is a white vest and a white pair of jeans. Obviously, they're not like the perfect matching. The closer you can get, the better. But I thought I would show like a little life hack to make you vest into a crop top. Life hacks with me, Steph. Ah. I'm gonna just roll it up to where I feel comfortable. Oh look, you can see my tummy hair. Okay, so I'm gonna stay up to here. I've then got like a, a hair tie, aka like a hairband. You can use an elastic band if you want. And all I'm gonna do is just twist it around the back. Basically, it's like we're making a bun. Literally watching the footage, I explained absolutely nothing. What I actually was doing was basically twisting the back of my vest into like almost like a knot and then tying the knot with the hair tie so it becomes more of a circle. And we're just gonna tuck it underneath. And woo! You have yourself a crop top. This is the actual one I'm gonna go for for like the final transformation. But I'll show you some alternatives if it's colder where you live. And also just make sure this Halloween you stay safe. Wear your mask. Like as particularly with this, you could do like an iconic moment where like everything matches to your mask. And also, don't forget your rings. Because, again, in the music video, she didn't actually wear jewelry apart from her rings. So wear them, bitches. But let's go on to outfit number two. So, this is actually my second option. If you do not feel comfortable wearing a crop top, that is completely okay. I've got you. I've got your back, Jack. I thought this one was quite cute. This actually reminds me more of what the guy was wearing. So, if you look at what the guy was wearing, he's actually wearing a ripped type top with, again, matching bottoms. And these are the closest trousers, actually, that I could find from the physical music video. I'm actually going to put down below some matching sets if you really wanted to be, like, matching. I actually want to wear this out right now. This one is just easy and cute. Now, also for shoes, it is exactly the same rule. Match, match, match. In the music video, she was wearing a pair of heels. I don't own a pair of heels for myself. What I would recommend is that she's going for shoes that are either the matching color to her outfit. So, for example, for the white look I done and the first one, I actually went for my white Converse. Or for this one, something tonally. So, I went for my bright pink Air Force, which is so comfy. But if you wanted to, I would actually say go for a neutral color, so maybe like a beige or one that's very close to your skin tone because do you know how cool that would look? Here's the last variation of the outfit. So for the last part, it's basically a long sleeve t-shirt or a jumper with it. I will say for this, the tighter you can get it, the better. I think this is also like another cute look. Honestly, I love monochromatic looks and I love this one in particular because you have all these like little details such as like the collar, which I think says inspired. So it kind of adds a bit of interest. This this is like if you want to be comfortable, again, especially if you're at home during Halloween, this is a really easy one to do. Now, should we check out to the, my favorite part, which is the makeup? I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it. I feel like a beauty guru. Ah. Let's start the makeup. If you're wondering like who actually did the makeup, it was by Lisa Eldridge, who did like the physical and the future nostalgia looks. And the one I'm gonna take specifically inspiration from is the pink one. If I keep on looking down, my mirror's here, and I'm gonna keep on referencing the photo. Look how pretty she looks here, by the way. We've actually got a wig. So you get to see me embarrass myself and try on a wig. Ah! From what I gathered, her brows, to me, look a little bit soaked, or they look a little bit more fluffier. I love my brows. I cannot deny. But I feel like to emulate this, like my brow hair needs to be a little more separated. So I'm actually starting off with the brows. So I'm gonna get my setting spray and like a soap bar, any clear one. So let me just get like a spare eyebrow spoolie actually. Now that I've got everything, let me zoom you in so we could do like the brows together. Look how close you are. Look how blurry this background is. So you can currently see my brows. I'm trying to grow them. It's doing this with them because I like to put them short and I kind of want to grow them out to be straighter. So um, just roll with it. For the soap brows, I'm going to take my thingy. Can you look how disgusting this spoolie is? Yeah, she a bit messy, but oh, that's because I tried to cover my brows once. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my setting spray in the soap and literally I'm just going to spray it like this. Then we're gonna get the spoolie. You know, this little genius invention. It's just dripping everywhere. And I'm just gonna run it through the soap, like, ooh, 
I know that some people actually use hairspray, like the Boo Guru I adore, um, the Brooks Brothers uses hairspray. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mess it up through the brows. I'm literally just running it through. What I didn't explain was basically when we're running the spoolie through our brows, we wanna make sure it's pretty rough. So we're really trying to get in there and really disturb the way the hair naturally is placed and flows. So then we are able to manipulate to any shape that we want to. Also, you know how paler looks? Do not worry, it will go away because the soap dries clear. And then what I'm gonna do is actually just brush them all up. So we're basically gonna look a little bit like Wolverine. And what I'm gonna do is instead of just keeping it up, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna curve it so it does that. So then my brows end up still kind of following the shape. So instead of like going upwards, we're gonna go like up and then curve. I am so sorry you can't actually see what the heck I'm doing. Why filming stuff? Why? Once we have this glamorous shape, you can see that the hairs have started to be spared out. What I'm gonna do is get my eyebrow pencil, which I would recommend to everyone, the Maybelline Ultra Brow Slim Pencil. It is genius. What I'm gonna do is actually imitate her brow shape, because her brows versus mine actually do curve down. So what I'm actually gonna do is curve mine to go a bit more down. This time, instead of seeing my forehead, you see my scalp. <laughs> Why? Um, when we get to the top up here, you can see my mini mouse mirror. Well, we're just gonna go and actually imitate that like soft part. It's just slightly down. We're gonna clean this up eye primer when we get to the eyes, so do not worry. Then I'm just gonna go in with a little brow gel. This is the Glossier Boy Brow. I'm just gonna use this for a pigment, honestly. I think her brows are quite dark. Obviously, they probably use like a lighter pencil because they are doing for blonde hair, not doing for brunette hair. However, for the wig that we got, little preview. If you wanna, this is the wig. She got some dark roots, but she's looking pretty. Also, the other thing is just make sure that the hairs at the front are just individualized because that is what's gonna make it look like that dually perfect. She might have popped off. So I'm gonna do my other, other brow of camera. We shall do the rest together. Let's start with our base. So we're gonna prime. I've been looking for a new primer actually. So if anyone has a good new primer, you tell me. Oh, and something else I have to say. Okay, facial hair. So if you wanna keep your facial hair, do it. This is completely up to you. You're in charge of your costume. Express it however you wanna. But if you wanna keep your facial hair, but not lose a transformation into a woman kind of thingy, I would recommend trimming your facial hair, like your beard on your mustache into like a one millimeter. Cause then it's still there like you can see that like there's a little bit of a shadow but when you cover it like foundation and all that stuff it will cover it all so i'm going to take a foundation that matches my skin color really well so this is the maybelline 24 hour safe foundation i fucking love this and i'm going to take my ginormous beauty blender i'm going to mainly concentrate it around the lower face region a little bit on my chin and on the sides of my forehead i'm going to take my big beauty blender and just blend it in and you can tell how seamless that matches yeah even in real life i'm like this we're kind of impressed. Next is concealer, and I'm gonna take probably my favorite. You can tell we love her to death, which is the Elf Hydrate in Camo Concealer. This is literally just one shade lighter than my foundation, and that's because in the actual look, she doesn't highlight to the gods. You can tell there's like highlighting being done, but it's not too much. And you can also tell the base is very glowy, which is then I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to fake it. So I'm just gonna get my concealer. I'm gonna mainly just do like, I think the dots, and this is where you do mainly highlight. And what I'm gonna do do. I'm gonna do a mini Jackie Aina technique, which is that we're gonna leave the concealer to right underneath the eyes longer so it's most full of coverage. Make it all about learning, to be honest, and just take your time and just also enjoy it. Like, oh my god, when you enjoy makeup, do you know how much more fun it is? Well, you can see that the best tips to do is just look up. So, I'm gonna go and set not everywhere though. Again, she's glowing to the gods. So, what I'm actually gonna do with this powder, I'm just gonna go and I'm just going to set the inner half of my eye. Basically, the areas you wouldn't want to be glowy. If you've got extremely oily skin, then go for it. I'm gonna set around the sides of my nose also. I'm actually gonna do the eyes next. Oh my god, welcome back. I'm gonna go in with my eye primer, and I'm gonna use the P. Louise base, and then I'm gonna take basically a flat packer brush. So I'm gonna do one eye with you, and then I'll do the other eye off camera. And with this, what we can do is actually clean up the bottom. I'm more of a tailored brow. Oh, that's a good term. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring it into the inner part also, because we will be working with some bright ass colors, so be prepared. I love using color. I actually started doing makeup using color and not really using like the neutral tone. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna be doing the pink look. I am blessed. 
best enough to actually be able to have the Naked Tutorials X Beauty Bay palette. I am in heaven. I love this. I'm gonna start off with the shade blend and snap. And I'm basically gonna put that along most of the eye actually, because this is like a halo eye. With the shape actually, it is winged, but there is still a gap. Like what I usually do is like smoke it up to the brow bone and like everywhere on the eye is colored. This, we have to make sure there's at least a sort of a gap here. So I'm gonna take a fluffier packer brush and I'm just gonna start by working it in the outer corner, just along here. Look how I shine. And I'm gonna bring it up, but making sure that I still have a gap. And I'm gonna also bring it in to the, the middle part of the eye. I'm gonna maybe smoke it out a bit. Basically what I'm doing is just packing this over, like almost like a halo eye, which is basically doing it on the outer, the middle and the inner corner. But we're not doing any darker shades because again, in the look, to me, there isn't that many. And also this is like the literal perfect shade. It's such a Barbie pink, I love it. But I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna just smoke it out into a little bit of a wing. Now that is done, this beautiful little eye moment. I'm gonna go and we're gonna cut it back with our piece of wee base because I still have some spare on my hand. And all I'm gonna do is do a little, just a center bit. She actually does it up to the point where the eyeshadow stops. So I'm gonna do the same. This this does not need to be perfect. This is literally just a sticky base, literally just to make sure the shim is pop. And the best advice for this is just to pat it on. You can kind of blend it out to the sides, all that, all that jazz. Because the color of pink is a little bit closer to Roxy Tan, which is this beautiful like rose gold shimmer versus Pride. I might go in with Pride later, but I'm gonna go in with Roxy Tan first. Can you see that shine? Oh, and I'm literally just gonna pack it on. Oh, 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 oh. And if you want to, which I'm gonna do is actually just go back in with any of the excess on the brush and just blend it away just so they blend together a little bit more. And then I'm gonna take this glitter, which I think was from Lottie London and I have no clue of the name of it. Because there's glitter in the center, I don't have individual glitters, nor do I have a glitter primer. I'm literally just gonna rub it through and just hope for dear life that it actually has some stuff. I feel like it's taking off the shimmer. Maybe we'll go a little bit of pride, a little bit of just on top. Oh my god, this completely changed the look. Oh, that's pretty pretty. Oh my, oh, look at that. Ah, I'm gonna go back in with the pink, just to ensure that it doesn't lose its pink element, because I know that's got like a blue shimmer. Onto the lower lash line. Basically, it's kind of like we're emulating the top on the bottom, which is genius, and I love that. So, I'm gonna use the same brush but do it on its like so it's flat and I'm just gonna bring it in to the outer corner of the lower lash line just here a little bit I don't think it was this smoky but I'm extra so we're just gonna bring it up to there I'm gonna leave it because what we're actually gonna do is go with a hot pink Ooh. so I'm gonna take this like little tiny flash of brush and I'm gonna take the Lottie London oh, this was a collab the Lottie London Miami collab palette and I'm gonna take this gorgeous freaking hot pink shade and I'm literally just gonna and I'm literally just gonna pat it on and I'm gonna keep it quite concentrated so again usually what I would do is blow out this inner corner to the thingy to like contour the face we ain't doing that today we're gonna keep it very concentrated so we're gonna keep it very much only in the inner corner oh and I'm gonna bring it into the lower lash line this is turning out even better than I was doing it yesterday ah you cannot tell me that is not a gorgeous shade you cannot tell me and then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna get a different brush and we're gonna get that shimmer shade I'm gonna get the rose gold because it's not as prominent and I'm basically going to Pack it on. I'm gonna get a little bit of Sainsbury just to make it a little bit more shimmery. Whoa, look at the look. Wow. Oh, I'm so impressed with myself. Yes. And then I'm going to do mascara. But that bit's boring. <laughs> I'm gonna do the other eye with the mascara on both eyes off camera and I shall be back to do the rest of the base. Oh my god, hi. I feel pretty. This mascara though is old, so I need a new one. So I'm actually gonna take blush first. And I'm gonna take my Glossier Cow Paint and Beam because if you looked at the cheeks, it's very like warm bronzing. There's blush and it's all very peachy tone. We're not exactly gonna make ourselves look more pink, we're gonna make ourselves look more bronzed. Thought this would be a good start. So I'm just gonna put two here and on the bridge of the nose because that's what I noticed that it was. And I'm gonna keep this one more concentrated on the cheek. Oh my God, wow. And I'm gonna bring it into the forehead a little bit more because it will make it look a bit more like of a gradient. And particularly with this product especially, what I think looks bad is just blending out with your fingers. There is so much on this side. Oh my God. And then I'm gonna put it on the bridge of my nose. I am still not over how heavy it looks on one side.
Next, what I'm gonna do is gonna take my bronzer. For my bronzer, she looks like she's pretty much bronzed actually up to here. Like, it's more of a central way versus like a curved way. And it is a little bit also on the bridge of the nose as well. I'm gonna take this brush because it's angled. I am able to be more directly being like, oh, I know I'm gonna put it. This is the CYO bronzer. There's so many good bronzers, like the Fenty Beauty one. I really want that so badly. Instead of doing like a curve in the figure of three, we're gonna bring it more in. That is an intense amount of bronzer stuff. I'm also gonna do it on the bridge of the nose because I kind of noticed there was a bit mixed. We wanna look a lot more bronze than we do like blushy. You can go back in with blush. I feel like because the blush is pretty intense already, I'm actually gonna leave it for the moment because the next thing I'm gonna do is highlight her. Now, if you know me, I love to go to the gods, but today we are not doing that. Today, we are going for a natural effect kind of glow. If you look, she is glowing to the gods. That might be like due to the time of day, but she seems very glowy, which is why I said do not set because we're going in the cream. I'm gonna go in with the Benefit What's Up highlighter, which is a very like naturally dewy glow glowy highlighter. I'm gonna go in for the high point and then I'm gonna go in and do almost like that. So I'm gonna go from the high point all the way to the top of my mouth and I'm gonna blend it out with my finger. This is why I also said not to set. Creams on top of powders get all messy. So this is why I said do not set your foundation so you are able to blend all the creams together. Can you already see how like it's looking a little bit more natural? I do prefer blending creams with my fingers and again for my oily powders you're probably just like no I don't want to look like I'm sweating. I would also recommend maybe using a powder highlighter to imitate the look using a highlighter that, that's very buildable. They are so good. Can you see how we're starting to look a little bit more like dewy in that way? The setting spray will also come into place because it will make us even look more dewy. Also it's the forehead because what I notice when I like glow is that it kind of does this. It follows that shape of like a, almost like a gigantic C. So I've just done this and I'm gonna quickly blend it out with my fingers. She's looking radiant. She's looking like ooh I'm healthy. And then for the nose which is gonna obviously do like the Tip. And then we're gonna do the bridge up here. That's where I noticed the highlight tool was mainly. She's also got on the chin and the cupid's bow area, so I'll do that as well. Now for the lips. See, this is where I'm a little bit of a struggler because I do not actually have a cream lipstick. I definitely think she has a cream lipstick on. So I'm gonna go in with my matte lipstick. I think this is from Sleek. It's called Birthday Suit. I need to invest in more lip products. So yesterday I tried to overdraw them and it looked like a pot mess. So for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly do the middle and I'm just gonna bring it out. What I meant is basically I'm gonna put a little bit of product in the middle of my lips and I'm gonna spread it out with my finger so it's less pigmented and more of a stain effect. And then, because I'm extra as fuck, I'm gonna go with my Fenty lip gloss in the shade sweet mouth this is a matte lipstick so i want to make sure it's gonna look somewhat creamy and then the final step is to set it all this is the final look. What do we think? Do I look like Dua Lipia? It looks healthy, but yeah, fine. And I'm feeling gorgeous. Next part is going to the wig. And now onto the bit that most people have been waiting for, the wig, the moment of truth. I'm going to get this sock looking thingy and put it on my head. Where the, there we, there. Wow, I've never looked so beautiful in my life. And now I'm going to attempt to put it on. There's so much hair everywhere. Why do I look like on such a big, Forehead. Is this it? Oh, Jesus. <sighs> do I look like to? Ah! Ew, it looks like a... Ah! Ooh. Ooh, wait, she might be a moment. I don't know why on camera I look like an egghead. God, it doesn't work. <laughs> I just don't know how to wear a wig. Like, I would wear it like this, to be honest. I'm kind of feeling this. Let me show you the final transformation. Comment down below any more transformations you want to see. I shall see you guys very, very soon with a new video. Cheers, adios, goodbye, people, goodbye.